Life can be scary and sometimes hard Like you got a winning hand and then you dealt the wrong card It ain't fair But you're not alone When you're down and out and high and dry In the darkest valley or the coldest night you'll find You're not alone With a song This is the Palaha Chautauqua. I'm your host, Christopher Palaha. Hi, happy Sunday. Um, we got a special little show for you today. It's special um, because it'll be mostly joyful and a little sad. Let's let's be honest, because things come to an end, right? And there's closure in life. But um, some friends and I wanted to offer you all a little bit of closure. As you know, Mystery 101 is officially... Dead Muerte, it's canceled, it's done, as they said on uh, the little the little tweet that went out. Detective Travis and his, his friend Amy have solved their last case. Um, and you guys have been the most explosive fan base that any actor could ever hope for. We are so grateful for you guys. You've made endless edits, you've done can, endless posts. You guys are so present and hungry, and I know that the news hit hard. Um, especially because I've been, I've been teasing the hope of a, of a episode or a movie number eight, uh, for about two years now. It's been, it's been some time. So, um, you know, all things, all good things must end, right? But, uh, but I wanted to talk with, uh, my friend, Jill, your friend, Jill Wagner, about this stuff. Kick off. Hey, Wagner. <laughs> there you are. Hey, by the way, uh, Robin's texting me. He can't get on. He doesn't know how to get oh, on. Oh, man. And can you tell Robin that he's got to be on his phone? <laughs> you can't do it on your computer it's got to be on your phone okay, hold He's, on hold, it, hold on okay all right i love it that we're in 2023 and we're all figuring out how to use facebook live um look at the numbers today i love that jill wagner brings the people hi people hi everybody uh, while Jill's getting Robin all set up, we are we are going to go live today. We're going to talk to Jill Wagner. We're going to talk to Robin Thomas, the trio that made Mystery 101 what it was. Uh, here you go, Robin. Hold on now, sir. Hey, hang on. Hold on. Um, okay. When I get Jill back. <laughs> working is... I was texting. Here's what I'm gonna do, Jill. So Robin, you're watching live. So Robin, you stay tight. You're on your phone. You're watching. Jill and I are gonna talk for just a bit, and then Robin, I'm gonna bring you on, and this the screen's gonna start getting uh, split into thirds. And guys, I'm gonna turn off commenting, so Jill's pretty faced and get bogged down with all the comments. And then at the end of the show, we'll open up for comments. Um, Jill, you've got an insane fan base. Look at this. We got a lot of people watching because of you. Thanks, oh my God. Girl. 
March, a thousand two hundred and something. Oh yeah. my God! The big they got, old, they're my fans. They're your fans. The big old been doing this. By the way, so sorry. My voice is like lost in outer space. I can't get it back. It's been gone for days. I don't know where it is. You sound cool. You sound like you look. Now you look. You look. Tough. Was, yeah. <laughs> Bobby's like masculine side. Bobby is all all boy, I guess. Your character. I shouldn't say that. Not not now. Uh, yeah, now everyone's gonna be like, "Wait, old. what?" Um, <laughs> it's okay. We live in a. We live in a. We live in a. It's a brand new world. Um, so you and I, let's talk mystery one hundred and one for a minute. Yeah. Because people are are shell shocked, and um, I don't think it was any surprise to you and I. I think we kind of knew back in in September twenty one when they started moving the goalpost as to when we were going to film number eight that. You know, whenever there's a new president, whenever the, whenever something happens in a network, there's often always people want to make their own footprint. They want to yeah. they want to create a network. You obviously were, were super close with Bill Abbott, and so when that offer came to you, it was a smart move. You were like, "Yeah, I'm gonna I have a family," and you weren't thinking about it in terms of working for one means not working with the other, anything yeah. like that. So when 2001 happened and 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 everything sort of got pushed on. I had been talking to Hallmark, and I know that there were conversations of a potential number eight. I know Christopher Plummer, Christopher, um, John Christopher Plummer, our wonderful yeah. writer, all seven episodes, um, had uh, ideas for number eight and had an outline, a beat sheet, and all that stuff. Um, but there was never ever really a date to keep going. But there was always hope. And it was because the show ended on that cliffhanger that it's probably one Horrible. of the most awful honestly like, though it was it was probably one of the most talked about cliffhangers in television history i mean i'm not even it isn't for better or worse it got people talking that's for sure people, yeah like people either love like they hate most people hated it everyone was like what and people will but stop. it was like that that like love hate kind of <laughs> most people would be like no i hate hated it but i think that it just got people thinking right and yes. and these these movies, a lot of the time, they're supposed to be wrapped up like, you know, pretty little packages by the end. And this one wasn't. And that's why I loved it because it wasn't. And it gave us hope for another one. Um, I never in a million years, though, thought that the series would end like that. You know, I, I have to tell you, I'm, I'm, I was shocked that, that Hallmark allowed the series to end like that. But you know, it's it's not my network and it's not my, I mean, I'm just an actor. You know what I mean? We're just actors. We're doing our job. And um, I think if you and I had anything to do with it, we would have filmed our own little ending. <laughs> we talked about it, didn't we? Did. we like right after, we like what should we should do like a little coda where we're like in a Vegas wedding or, you know, we had we had little plans. I liked your post, your Instagram post on Monday where you're like, in my mind, they've gotten married. They're off to Fiji for their honeymoon. They. they they went to VG, a hundred million percent. Right. They found a paint where they found a pearl, a giant pearl in yeah. the river. And they sold it. Yeah, they found it. <laughs> they lived happily ever after. <laughs> We're rich. Um, let's talk about how we, let's talk about the pilot. Um, let's go through a little best of, and then I'm going to bring Robin in. And then we're all going to, we'll, we'll talk for a while. I let uh, uh, Preston Vanderslice know that we were doing this. Um, if we can bring other people on who were part of the early show, that'll be great. But yeah, yeah, let's just sure. let's just talk about like, listen, what's done is done. Um, I've been a part of, I've had seven TV shows that have all come and gone, and and they're all great, and there, there's no reason why any of them got canceled because we all had ratings and critics liked them. And but like we we both you and I know the business is just kind of what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we could we could commiserate about why it happened, or we could you know, or we could talk about all the fun stuff that because it was a really robust chapter in both of our lives you had two babies during the filming of mr 101 like you literally got your family started i did yeah uh, yeah um, we started in the when when did we film the pilot what year was it oh my gosh that was god it felt like 20 years ago um was it 18 was it 2018 we did Okay, so we did, we did I was, Fiji. I was married, right? Yeah, you were yeah married. so it would have been 2018, because I got married in 2017. Okay, so we did, um, we did Pearl in Paradise in May of 2018. I remember that real specifically, because I, I have a personal marker of when we filmed that and all that. Yeah, yeah. And 
And then yeah, so I think it was December or it was like the fall of 2018 we did the pilot episode. Yeah, because I remember they threw they threw your name out at me and I was like, wait a minute. I was like, Chris Pla like Chris Pla that I just got through working with. And they were like, yeah, we're really trying to get you guys together. And I was thinking brilliant, like brilliant on their behalf. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I, I think we know too, when we're filming, you know, I mean, when you're filming with somebody, you either are like, yeah, this is, this is gold. This is magic. Like, you know, we've got that connection that in, in our case, I think we had the same humor and I think it really helped the flow of the show and those little nuggets that we found, yeah. you know, we have the same kind of vibe. And so I think that works. I mean, this was discovered in, in Fiji. Um, we, uh, <laughs> Robin's like, yeah, Robin, I out. got you, baby. We're going to pull you on <laughs> it, Robin. Hang tight. Um, uh, you and I worked so well on the Fiji movie together because there was, I think both you and I understand this business and we both have a real, like we come from a place of humility where it's not like it, we're not the most important thing on set when we're on set. It's not about yeah. us about the story. We, we always feel honored and privileged to have a job and we have one. We're both grateful for the work. Um, and then we both have a really wicked sense of humor. Yeah. And we just, I mean, <laughs> the majority of the time, like when we're not, like even when we're on set together and we're about to roll, it was just fun to be like in the moment making jokes and then, and it was easy. And I think people love the fact that because we're so um, loose, I think it yeah. comes off very natural and very yeah. kind of rich. And I think also neither, I, either, neither you or I ever learned our lines. And so we were always kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> and if we did, we just changed them. Yeah, um, and if we did, like, then we'd be like, yeah, but can we say this? <laughs> well, you know, here to, to, but to our credit, we always gave them the script, right? We'd give them the script and then we would improv. And a lot of the times our improvs would make it and and I think there's something to be said for actors that can do that. Um, not every actor, I wouldn't say, should do that, right? Because yeah. sometimes it's just it's not natural. But if you are more of a natural actor, which I think both both of us are, you know, I think if anybody would look at our acting, you'd be like, oh yeah, that's that really done naturally. We're not like, yeah, you know, I mean, you're you're you are a trained actor, so you could do anything. But for me, I'm just like, just <laughs> can I just be real? It's just more easy for me to do that. Um, but I think, yeah, I think that um, our, I remember one ad lib in particular. It was the, the, I can't remember what episode it was, but I was in, I was so, looking at someone's apartment and you walked up the stairs. Do you remember that one? And I was, uh, I was not supposed to be in there yeah, and I'm like, don't touch anything. Yeah. And you're all. <laughs> I just like touch you. And it was like little moments like that are gold. But, you know, people don't know that that's ad lib. That's just us being us as, as Chris and Jill actors, you know? And it also, it also goes to the nature of, <clears throat> you know, we had Mary Beth Sprouse as our executive. Yeah. Um, and Chris, um, Oh, well, yeah, over at Hallmark. Yeah. Over at Hallmark. Yeah. And we had yeah. Emily Merlin as her, as she, and she was working under her. And they were very, um, they were very generous in allowing and trusting yeah. us. Yeah. And you and I had, had, you know, John Christopher Plummer as a writer. So we had the bones were there yeah. and they were very, very, um, and so, and he was, he was confident as a writer enough to be like, yeah, if something happens on set and it's, and it works in the editing room, that's better. Like, yeah, use I that. love actors. I mean, I love writers that, that, you know, especially with the, with these kinds of um, um, films, I think it adds so much to the heart of them when you can get those kind of moments, you know, yeah. and it allows the actor the freedom and, and it creates just a really fun environment for us. Yeah. And and obviously I know not everything like online s you're not changing one single word, right? <laughs> not an um and but like it, everything, but it's but it's a different kind of show, right? It's military like like there are certain acronyms like you just you know everything has to be. But I think with the family friendly, but John, I mean like you said his his um 
script, the bones were all there. It was beautiful. It was beautifully written, you know? We just embellished. We got to, we got to, we had a little freedom. I'll never forget, I got a call from my manager when we were filming the pilot, which was directed by Blair Hayes. Remember that? Oh, I love Blair. Blair. And um, American. And um, my manager called me up and they said, yeah, we got a call. We got a call from someone from, from the network and Mary Beth, and they're a little concerned that you're playing it too dark. And I remember, and I was sitting there with you and I'm like, why is my manager call? I said, so I called up Mary Beth and I was like, Mary Beth, listen, <clears throat> there has to be like, a, you have yeah. to see this art. You have, Travis is a cop and if we're gonna take him seriously, you know, we're yeah. gonna have to, he's gonna have to start somewhere. And if you're gonna let a teacher, like a, this is the woman come into a crime scene and help, there has to be some stakes and there, we have to earn that a little bit. And I remember saying, just trust me. And if you yeah. don't like it, you can find it. Like, replace me with somebody else or do, do something else next time. But like, it was interesting to, to, to really, I think you and I came into the job where we both were so confident with who Amy was supposed to be. Yeah. You did, you, had, you made a lot of solid choices like in the pilot about who she was and how smart she was and how observant she was. I remember when you were making the pilot, you were like, I'm gonna make her look at like everything in the room. Yeah. And she's just look at life as if it's a little puzzle piece and we're gonna put all this stuff together. I remember thinking I wanted a leather coat because I wanted him to have like a back. And that so leather coat was like a thing. <laughs> and they give it other the, actors were All like, the other guys were I like, want that hey, coat. why'd you get a leather coat? <laughs> and then you were like, I don't, I don't want, want the leather coat anymore. The leather coat, yeah. You can't, every, once everybody moves into the neighborhood, you gotta move out. <laughs> no, and I, but I, I love that because it created Travis. It created Travis as this kind of dark, he had to, he had to come from there and, and a real place. We had to make these characters real. And I remember we fought for that because I think I have a problem with some of these mysteries that it is hard to believe, right? Because my, my husband was a, a federal law enforcement officer. I mean, he's like, come on. You know, she, she's like a teacher is not going to break the tape and go underneath the tape and, and go to the crime scene. So you had to really come up with something that was real for these two characters to, to and for him to allow her to do that. And um, I think we worked our way through it um, because they are cozy mysteries, right? right. You know, that's the, right. the term. So right. it's like bridging the gap of between like, what what do we allow um, that makes them that and then what do we say no look you know we have to stick to this because this is a reality and we don't want people laughing at us you know right right and I think that's that but I think that's one of the reasons why our show was so successful is because for the most uh, most part like you could believe that she would really be able to help him you know in her profession yeah, yeah. Yeah, because she was smart. She was smarter in a lot of ways, and she had like this. And I think that's how we play. I think we kept it. We kept it real because Amy <clears throat> had a superpower where she yeah. could observe things. She could put things together. She was very, very, very smart. Her hyper intelligence. Travis knew that. It was like, okay, he's got. It. She's got an asset that I could use. And then I think you and I found something early on. I forget if it was the pilot or the second episode or the second movie where Travis's biggest concern was just protecting you. So he became this protector. And I think that theme, when we ran those things yeah. out, it became, okay, Amy was gonna do this thing and then Travis was gonna protect her. Yeah. I just became an interesting thing. You were an amazing number one. I mean, you know, it's hard on those Hallmark movies when you're the, you're the main girl and you've got every, you were there every day, 15 days, every time. Apparently pregnant most of the time. <laughs> you were pregnant. How many of those dang movies were you pregnant on, girl? Like three of them, three. I, I of think there was like total. I think I was pregnant for like either three or four. Yeah. Movies. I, I mean, <laughs> trying to hide it. I'll never. And it, as we go along, I'd get bigger and bigger. I'm like, oh my gosh! You remember we hugged one time? And it was yeah, like was all... my belly. <laughs> I'm all sorry, little one. Sorry, I'm not. Sure. I remember you were like. This just feels wrong. It just it's like feels wrong. Yeah. We had to do one of our first kisses, and you had like a huge belly. I'm like, mm, uh, this is a thing. <laughs> Some dudes have been like, yeah. yeah. Um, do you, I'll never forget what the, it was. The one that it might have been the last one that we filmed. It might have been number seven, or it might have been the one right before it. But there was the pandemic, and we had our 15 day quarantine, 
And I went into my hotel room and I did the lemonade diet. So all for 15 days, all I was eating was the lemonade and the maple syrup. And I had a trampoline, I was bouncing and you were pregnant and I showed up on set on day one and you're like, look how oh, skinny you are, you God. stupid bitch. <laughs> you're uh, like, I'm like, you look, yeah, you look like you had like been in the freaking gym for like 20 days straight. And here I am like an extra 50 pounds at it. I'm like, no, oh, this is gonna be a real fun shoot. <laughs> I'm like, could you get him away from me in every shot? Yeah, you're like, just put him. I don't want to shoot. Put him over there. <laughs> put him. Put him in front of me. All right. We had to hide my belly between everything. You know, people always ask me that. What do they do? What do they do? I'm like, we just hide it as, as much as we can. I mean, you know, it's not fun. It's not fun for me. Trust me. I, I don't. But I appreciate Hallmark letting me work while I was pregnant because a lot of other networks and shows do not, yeah. um, you know. I'm glad you said that, because I was gonna say like, yeah, it sucks that we, you know, it sucks that, that Mystery Woman was no more, but that was amazing that they, I mean, literally it was, there was so many movies and, and Randy Pope is the guy who greenlights all those things at the time. And he was saying, yeah, we'll just hide it. Like let her, let her work, let her do her thing. And we'll just- Yeah, I really appreciated that. Cause I had a lot of stuff coming, a lot of bills coming in. And um, so it's, you know, it's nice to be able to feel like you can still contribute as a pre pregnant woman like you just don't have to sit at home and eat bonbons and like put your feet up and watch tv i mean yes if you need to do that fine but for me i was like how do i contribute to our family i want to do i want to you know so i i really appreciated that yeah um <clears throat> i'm gonna bring on robin he's been so patient i don't know if he still knows what he's doing he's been texting let me see if he okay robin get ready buddy i'm inviting you you should be able to split screen with Jill and I. Let's see if it happens. Because he probably was like. He said he couldn't hear there us. He oh, there he is. <laughs> Robin. Hey, guys. <laughs> hey, Hi, Dad. You? <laughs> you look great. Good. Hey, say, boy. <laughs> Thanks. I'm doing good. What's going on, Papa? Good. How are you? You guys look good. You guys look good. So, oh, thanks. Right. You look good Thank too. You. So do you. There's looking long, long. You got your glasses. Yeah, you got, got your James Dean glasses, glasses on. Got my shirt. I'm just sitting in my recliner. <laughs> um, so, you know, one of the other cool things about Mystery 101 is so Jill and I worked together twice before. We did a pilot years ago called North Shore in Hawaii. And then we did that show for Hallmark, A Pearl in Paradise that we got to shoot in Fiji. And then Robin, you and I, you played my dad in a TV show called Life I Unexpected did. on the sure CW did. before you played Jill's yeah. dad. So, so Mystery 101 had a little uh, yeah. incest is best thing. Going. I was actually on North Shore too. I did, a, I did a, an episode of North Shore in Hawaii. Yeah, that was fun too. Yeah, we never worked together on that show, but uh, yeah, yeah. And a history, a history. Remember, yeah, what, what episode? Remember? Oh, what, God, what man, episode? That's that's what you do? <laughs> you test my memory, are you? No, I, I have no. <laughs> yeah. What, you what was your character? <laughs> what were your lines? What were your lines, Robin? <laughs> Did you know? <laughs> um, you guys had an amazing relationship on Mystery 101. Your chemistry as father and daughter was unrivaled. I remember, uh, Robin, when the character was not cast yet and they were throwing out names. I remember there were a couple names that were floated by, uh, yes. uh, but Penny Perry, yeah. who's the head of the cast uh, over at Hallmark, I think she was a huge fan of Life Unexpected, and obviously yeah. she yeah. knew you yeah. for years. And you guys yeah. Yeah. Together for a long time. Yeah. And she was like, I know exactly who the guy is. And the fact that the three of us are Americans, oh. and the fact that Blair Hayes was an American. You yeah. unheard of? Why? Heard of. Oh, because they don't, yeah. they don't yeah. have so many Americans on, on the show? Is that, is that why? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, for it was tax credits, you know, you have to have you can have your lead as American, but the, wow. everybody yeah. else has to be Canadian um, to get the tax credits oh, that you oh, need to shoot. Oh. So you can Canada. only have yeah. one one lead actor. Is that right? Really? I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. Sure. I, I think, yeah, yeah. So if you watch the movies, movie. usually one one what usually the guy's Canadian, the girl be American yeah. or if the girl's Canadian, yeah. an American guy. Yeah. Um, and then the writer was American. So you got Christopher John yeah. Palmer's American. Blair was yeah. American. I'm proud we didn't shoot it in America. Yeah. So we were an expensive show for them. Um, what, what did you guys, what was the trick? 
I mean, I know that everybody loves Jill. Anybody who meets Jill immediately is like, oh, come on, girl. But like, what was the trip in the chemistry that you guys had? Because people love it. You know, you got me. It was just, uh, you know, uh, uh, easy to work with. You know, that's all. This, this is bottom line, you know, uh, and sweetheart. I don't have to do much. I don't have to do much, mm -hmm. really. Robin, you're like, you're, Robin, you are such a warm actor. You're such oh, a warm you. person, but the way you played Graham, it, he was so warm. And I was just like, I don't know. I, I totally connected. Mm -hmm. I connected to you as a person. Um, and then just seeing you play Graham, I was like, oh, this is going to be so easy because it just felt like, okay, yeah, he could really yeah. be my dad. You know what I mean? Like you're just the warmth and our, our and our chemistry. I think we had some really good scenes, mm. some really heartwarming mm. scenes, some funny scenes. The one scene I love, my favorite scene is when you, um, the they, um, who was it? The, it was the book. Oh, gosh, it was I can't remember the name of the episode, but it was the book, oh right um, where his his book was launched and the girl the the, the, the hot the hot yeah. lady came on. Yeah, and he was just so flustered and he was gonna tell her. <laughs> what's up and you know and he's just you know you got to see robin just all flustered and, you know and then cut to oh, the next scene oh yeah oh, you know ooh, oh. Oh. <laughs> she's hot and it couldn't have been yeah, more different fun. than what you said you were gonna do <laughs> i had so much fun on that show working with you guys you have yeah, a super power great. it was fun yeah i love our meeting the first yeah, time we met was on yeah, the campus. And I was just, that oh, was man. a great one. You gave me a hard time. And your character's yeah, like, hey, who are the, who's yeah, the, uh, do, yeah, yeah, who's that's right. who's the yeah. coffee fool? You're doing what? You're who? Oh, yeah? Mm. Yeah. We're like sussing yeah. each other out. I'm like, well, who the hell are you? And you're like, I'm her dad. Right. Yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's good. And, and the yeah. fact that you guys have worked together so before, like, yeah, you know, obviously that really helped. It was just, uh, yeah, it was it was it was it was a game. Yeah, fun. And you you know, you guys are easy to work with. That's 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 it. That's the bottom. <laughs> that's bad for my <laughs> reputation. <laughs> you bad, bad wants a new rep. You're hard ass. Oh, yeah, oh, well oh, sorry. Well, sorry. <laughs> I think it might be uh, I, I would say this, um, it's going to change a little bit. Either people or, people that watch Mystery 101 and love Amy, I, well, that's good. it's uh, slightly different good. on uh, Lioness. But, but you know what, I love, like, I, but, but as an actor, like, uh, you sure. know, we do Absolutely. different things, yeah. right? Like, that's the beauty of what we do. Like, you get to play different characters yeah. and do different things. And, um, but I, I don't, I, I still so much, so much love the family friendly movies that I do because, you know, I know that my children can watch them. I know that my grandma loved people them. Love like them. Yeah. so yeah. many people, people watch them. Yeah. yeah. And it does, it does so much for so many people. So it's yeah. like yeah. fulfilling, it's, you know, it's, it's funny because Hallmark has, uh, you know, it used to be, well, I used to watch Saturday Night Live and they would get, <laughs> they, they'd be mock, they mock uh, uh, Hallmark movies because they were so, uh, you know, uh, Cornflakes, cornflakes, and, and uh, you know, uh, yeah. And so, uh, yeah. but people just love Hallmark movies. And every, I, I say, oh, well, I'm doing a Hallmark movie. Or I did a bunch of Hallmark movies. And uh, inevitably, the, the, somebody who I wouldn't expect to be watching Hallmark movies, oh, I love Hallmark movies. I watch them all the time. Yeah, they're, 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 they're entertaining and they're easy to watch and that's that's good it's entertainment it's good people need that right and when they're our, done right our, like show, was, anything, our show was great. i remember we had a, we had a did, really good show yeah we had yeah. a really top notch and i think it's because you know robin you are an actor who cares yeah. Yeah, jill cares yeah. i care i remember we would sit down go through a script we'd comb through it and we'd find the things that bumped we call them little bumps and, you know, one of the things I'll say about Jill is that she bumped on, Jill, you bumped on a ton of stuff. You're like, well, this, and this, and this. And I was like, okay, that one you can make work. You just try it again. Like, if you just say it, like, emphasize this word and that instead of that word, it'll work. But what I would also quickly, I learned, I was like, if Jill's bumping on something, then, like, 
50% of it, every other one was actually something that we needed to look at yeah. and like, yeah. and made it better. Like, and Jill, you made me better. You made me a better, a better investigator of a script because there are sometimes I'll show up and I'll just, I'll selfishly make my lines work, but I wouldn't ever, I didn't really worry about the rest of the story, yeah. but yeah. you would come through and you'd be like, the whole story has to, why? Like, so you were, you were bumping on other characters' lines that didn't affect you, but it affected the overall story. And that was something that I learned from you. I thought that was really yeah. cool. I mean, I know it's added work and we, we don't have to do that as actors, but for me, I've always thought, why not make the story better so then we're all better right like it just does it, it you know as long as as i'm elevating the the story um and it's fun like it for me it's fun to comb through and just to be like okay how can i tweak i know that it probably annoys the writer and i'm sorry but um you know it's just how i how i work how i you know, I like your hair, yeah. by the way, or lack thereof. <laughs> my, my, where did it go? Um, thanks, Robin. You're <laughs> one of the few. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's funny. You know, it's like I try not to read people's comments because, to be honest with you, doesn't it really doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. I mean, it's just hair. Doesn't it's so matter. it's so silly. Um, and I, and I think I've really learned that my, how I attract people and how I come off to people should never be based around my hair or my looks. It should be, it should be based upon, of course. you know, my warmth and my, and my attitude and my, you know, and so I've really like had to focus more on like me instead of just relying on this walking in the room and okay my hair and my makeup you know it's just it's interesting as a woman how much we do kind of use our hair as a crutch and it seems so silly and it but but it's true and i can tell you it's true because when i cut off my hair i was like oh yeah. god like people are mad it, it, yeah. Oh, and right? people are mad at me and they get so rude like i read some comment today this lady was just like, wow. what, what are you trying to prove? I'm like, um, I'm an actor. Wow. Do, you know, do you know who you follow? <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I'm an actor. I'm just trying to prove something to the next character. Like, you know, I'm, I'm trying yeah. to be the next character. So, but it's okay. Everybody well, can have their looks, opinion. I just, I, think it looks cool. I don't I like to share cool. my opinion yeah, if it's, welcome. well, thank Your you. Your hair looks Thank you. Cool too. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, actually, Chris has always got good hair. Come on, <laughs> yeah, come on. Um, let me see. I've invited a special guest on. Let's see if if uh, if they can accept the invite. I wonder how many people we can bring onto this thing at once. You're doing it pretty good. You mean, Over you mean, a thousand this on, the, on the screen. Well, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Jill. Yeah. I'm oh, where, oh, where are you oh. talking from? Jill, where, um, are you, where are you now? Home? Yeah. Tennessee, home. I just got back from Nashville today. How was it there? Hmm. Yeah. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. It's sunny and nice. slight breeze nice. Nice. over the hills. Yeah. <laughs> good here, too. Man, I'm trying to bring... Um, I'm trying to bring Vandy on, old Preston Vanderslice, but, okay, it says, oh, that's what it just said. He's unavailable. Okay. Well, I was going to bring Preston on, but apparently he's Doesn't he have a baby? He wow. did. He's got he got baby. married. Wow. He's got a baby. That's probably why he's unavailable. Yeah. <laughs> we all know. You know something about that these days, don't you, Wagner? Oh, gosh. Two. They're down there, downstairs, babysitting themselves. You guys gonna do another one? You're gonna have three? No. You done? No. no. Yeah, my body yeah. is done. Like, I'm good. I'm good. If any surrogates wanna, you know, <laughs> if you wanna call me, let me know, but I'm not doing, I am not having another baby. I feel like I was pregnant for two years. Every time you saw me, I was pregnant. You were pregnant forever, and, you, and there's a good, good record of it, too. Oh, gosh. I was like, Palab, you, you're like, what, what did we joke on? Did, was it you that were like, every time I work with somebody, they get pregnant? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. and I was like, get away from me. <laughs> get away. Well, you know, and at the time when I said that, I was getting my, I was, I was, my wife was getting pregnant. So I felt very fertile because every time I would work, then all of a sudden, <laughs> there was, and people were getting pregnant. And you were the last person at that, and I was the last, and I, but I'm not getting anybody other than, oh boy, that's, oh. oh my gosh, so people are going to take off of this, they're going to be like, <laughs> Christopher got Jill pregnant. That's the real father of that's, Jill's. Yeah, that's what happens as, at, out of this Chautauqua. That's the <laughs> great, great. <laughs> Your kids are much, much. they look too much like their father to be mine. Yeah, Dave, um, Dave going to be like, you need to be sending some money then. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I don't care who the dad is. I just pay for their college. <laughs> um, well, Good guys. I mean, you know, Likewise. it's good to see Likewise. you both. Yeah. I'll say that much. What was your favorite memory, Robin, of, oh, of oh, all the man. shoots? Wow. You got to what be in. You were in all of them, right? You were in every, every episode, movies. every movie. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was in all of them. Yeah, yeah, I we was. Did seven. Yeah. Oh. Seven out of seven. Oh, man. Um, the last one was like that. It was the triple hander. It was like Fun. the three of us Fun. were kind of going yeah. out. And I liked how they, they kind of yeah. broke that story in a way. It was interesting. Um, I think one of my favorite scenes with you is the road trip. Where oh, we're yeah, like, we're going. Well, let's go. And remember the guy, the, the actor who was the magician? There was like your boy, boyfriend, it was Amy's ex boyfriend. Yeah. He was, and in real life, he was a magician yes. and like, for the royal family oh, in England. I don't, and, I don't remember. Yes, that yes. yes. Come on. What was Matthew. His name was Ma Matthew. Matthew, that's yeah. right. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah I don't good remember. dude. He was, he was a good dude. I don't remember, a magician. Yeah. I don't remember and then, the guy who was a magician. We, yeah, he had the dark. He was a he was a, a white guy with dark hair. But he wasn't in the he wasn't a magician in the show, Robin. I got that. Yeah, he wasn't in, in just in real life. For all he was of you a magician. watching this, this is but this it was the, the way, this is it, it was, was the episode where we uh Joe would have to explain things to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'll never forget Aaron Cahill. Uh, Aaron Cahill, oh, legacy, yes, which he called you a legacy, legacy actor, actor. Yes. and you were like. You're like, wait a minute. So oh. what is what does that mean? And she's that like, so just that you ran, man. Uh, you didn't know you've been around for a And you're like, true. Oh, it's fun. Yeah. Is that, is that I'm old. Is that <laughs> we we all started sorry, calling just, you that after just, after she said that. That's my intro. I'm the legacy actor. Yes, it's the legacy actor. The old <laughs> legacy actor. Oh, yeah. What are what are you doing now, Robin? I'm like, what not you much, to? not not a heck of a lot. I'm I'm just I'm, here's here's my backyard. I spend time back there. I'm a are you in home? Where are you? Wow, my backyard. Pretty little yard. That is beautiful. I spend time there. I spend time in my house. You know, I, you know. Oh, they're doing How great. How are your great. grandbabies? Oh, yeah, my grandbabies, twins. They're two and a half, and they're just fantastic. They're so funny. They're so different. Oh man, there's and they switched. They, one came out. It was he was very he was very uh, uh, sort of quiet and, and reserved and the other one was very you know uh, uh, extroverted now and then they switched now now the other one is, is has taken the the and they're not they're not identical twins they're fraternal twins so you know you can tell them apart easily because they look different but uh, it's just it's fantastic yeah but my gosh having twins so it's oh. like having quadruplets for my daughter wow. Oh boy, boy, your poor daughter. It's astounding. Yeah, but it's it's <laughs> wonderful. I built forts for them. I have I have uh, when they come over. I have little. I have see these boxes. So I have boxes here. It looks like my place is a mess, but actually I build forts with these things. I build. I take and I put like oh, blankets on the. Blankets oh, man. So and, I, and I I build forts and they pillows in there and they crawl in there and it's great. Yeah, we have fun. Yeah. You know what I'm calling. Calling my dad, and I'm gonna be like, uh, Robin is building forts <laughs> with his grandbabies. What are you doing? Like, he's not building any forts. Gotta have twins. Like, Gotta he falls have asleep. Twins. <laughs> yeah, it's, they're doing great. Thanks for asking. Yeah, they're wonderful. Yeah, healthy and good. 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 Yeah. yeah. And, and your and your good. your boobies, um, your boobies are good. Uh, mine are. Wow. Yeah, Army just had her Early third birthday, birthday and. Uh, and Daisy's getting wow. ready to turn. Oh my gosh! Oh. Hi. Speaking of, <laughs> speaking of Aaron Cahill, 
Aaron, did you hear the story about the legacy actor comment? The, the, the comment hey. that's, that's gone Damn around it. the world. I, oh my I, god! I really just that day. Also, hi guys. Is Aaron? Is Aaron? Megan texted here? I just got off the plane. I'm like on exhausted. The, under the, um, no, uh, no, Megan texted no. me. It went really well on Friday, and Sydney had a great time. Yeah. So I just. It's so funny. So I just. I texted Aaron because I was like, I need a sitter. I'm coming to Nashville. I need a sitter. Do you know anybody? So she hooked me up with <laughs> the sitter. So it, literally, we yeah. just got, we just talked to each other. Oh, great. So, she yes, it was great. Thank time. you so much. Hi, yeah. hi. Yeah. Hi, Aaron. See, the truth is, in the, in the Hallmark universe, we all know each other, and we're all friends in real life, and we all have this very, like, so whenever you see people, congratulations on your movie last night. You Thanks, had a, a movie yes, congratulations. I was just, I heard I just missed a lot of gruff about the, the comment that I wish I never made. Yeah. I will, yeah. The, I will take that to my grave. The place. legacy. <laughs> it gave us a lot to work with though, Aaron. For... Years That's later. Three years or two and a half years later. Crazy. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Um, I'm so sorry I missed the beginning of this. I genuinely was, we were just picking up our dog now. So I didn't. I... All right. I, we just wanted you to hop on and have and a I, chance I, to say I'm hi to everybody. I'm so grateful to have been part of this so I could meet you guys and get the honor of working with you. You guys are such incredible humans and brilliantly talented actors. Thank you. No. We, we appreciate Yeah, we we appreciate you being on the show and and bringing what you brought to Mystery 101. It was a fun you, little, are, you know, it was a fun little run. It was it was a real gift and, and for a myriad of reasons, but the the biggest one being now I get to know you guys and so I'm really super grateful. But also get to be part of how much the fans love it. Yes. Um you know, everything has its time, you know, everything season reason or a lifetime but gosh the fans are gonna miss that i will too yeah well thanks for hopping on kid good to see you bye 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 thanks for having me guys bye bye um awesome aaron's awesome all right Well, do you guys want to answer a few questions from the fans? Sure. Okay. I'm going to turn the comments on. So, guys, if you've asked a question, we haven't seen them, mm-hmm. so you have to add a new question to the to the table. Um, okay, it says, if – the first one is if um, – if, yeah. Uh, uh, so if John Plummer <laughs> hasn't written the script for number eight, can he write it for another network? Crown Media owns – owns Mystery 101, so it's a Crown Media property, right? Isn't that the... Yeah, that's the an negatory ghost writer. Yeah, so that's, so there's no on that. It's uh, it's one and done. My daughter's on. The um, daughter's on. Hi, so bro. Lisa says... She's on. She must where's be Zoe? She's Aww. Aww. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, someone says they have a salt pig because of the show. <laughs> I think of you whenever, I think of... <laughs> Mystery 101, whenever I'm at my stove. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, I have a question for somebody. Let me see if. Oh, hold on a second. This is going to be. Robin, have you done any uh, more paintings? No, no I'm question. actually I'm working on this one here. I'll kind of I'll try to show you. I've been working on it for a long time. I have to finish it. Good. I'm glad that you mentioned it because maybe it'll force me to actually <clears throat> get this thing done. You keep talking. I'll I'll I'll, I'll just show. I'll show you. Says, are you up for oh, another oh, movie together? Course, We're course. always up for another movie together. Um, Jill, they got a question here. When is when is Lioness airing? Do we know yet? Um, we're hoping sometime maybe around July-ish. Summer, yeah. summer. Yeah. I'll just say summer. Okay. You you were right. I'm getting texts from Preston Vanderslice, and he's like, dude, we are so in over our head right now. We're, I'm, I'm with the little girl. Oh. He just sent me a picture. Baby, hundred percent. Like, I'm working on. Um, yeah, um, I just. Oh my gosh! Girl, I love it. it. You did this, Robin? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, cool. cool! Wow. <laughs> Dude, one of my That's 
favorite stories that I've ever heard, let alone about you, is, and I don't want to say this over uh, social media, just in case it's your personal private story, you don't want to share it with the world, but it is the one about oh, you and oh, Lennon in New York oh, City. God. When you, dude, I, every time you tell that story, He's so cool. I just, I'm like, wait, you got to do what for what? And pretty cool. So Robin, before you were an actor, or probably coinciding your early days as an actor, you were a very successful I sculptor actually, in New York City, New York and you had a whole career. I didn't go to New York to act. I went to New York to sculpt, <clears throat> and uh, that's what I did for years, for years. And, uh, and, and had a, in order to make a living, this was back in the 70s, and in order to make a living, you can, you can stop any time you want to. But I, uh, I, no. I had to oh, find I hear a way it. to make a living. So I you know, was good with my hands, and this was the time that lofts were just sort of starting in New York. And uh, it was cheap, and, and people wanted to, you know, have walls built and have, have stuff, you know, bathrooms and kitchens created in these work in these industrial spaces in lower, lower Manhattan, in Soho. Uh, so I started doing stuff like that, eventually had a contracting company, and um, it was, I called it uh, Fox Water Company. Anyway, so um, uh, and I had finished a big... Uh, a job it was a it was the biggest um, it was like an air wand or, or a Whole Foods health food store in New York City it was on the lower east side on uh, uh, Waverly, Waverly and uh, 7th Avenue and um, I finished this job and I came in under budget and within time and I and I would always do a job and then I'd stop and I'd sculpt as long as I could afford to and then somehow miraculously I would find another job and I finished this, this health food store and the guy who I thought was the owner of the store was actually the manager. So I get a call one Sunday and this guy is on the phone. He says, hey, Robin, I want to thank you very much for doing this great job. I said, oh, uh, who are you? And he said, I'm actually the owner of the health food store and my name's uh, so forth and so on. And, and uh, I just wanted to uh, tell you that uh, one of my clients who's in the music business, um, uh, is going to call you because uh, they love what you did. And I wasn't really looking for a job. I wanted to really sculpt, you know. So I said, okay. So thank you very much. And um, I, he hangs up. And then about 15 minutes later, I get this call. Uh, uh, Robin, hi. I said, hi. This is Yoko Ono. Uh, uh, John and I love John. I said, would you come and... Uh, take a look at some work that we have. And I, so I used to be able to do a good Yoko Ono, but that's a long time ago. Anyway, um, I could. <laughs> Probably you <laughs> could do a good Yoko Ono. Anyway, so, like, oh, wait, what? The, the short version is I went up there and, and uh, to the Dakota, which is where they, where they lived, where Yoko still lives. And, um, and, and uh, I told myself if I, I was a big John Lennon fan. So I said, if I, if I ever meet, John Lennon would be very cool, just very, very cool, not go crazy. And I'm in their <laughs> kitchen, which is huge, has a big one wall, is, is all electronic equipment. One wall is, is where the secretary's uh, desk, and another wall is where the baking area, another wall is, is uh, it was really big. Two big couches, sofas, and a coffee table in between. And so I'm sitting there with Yoko, and and we're, I'm drawing and she's telling me stuff and we're just talking and I have my head down like this. And well, uh, Yoko says, oh, I'll, I heard this, hear this door open. And Yoko says, oh, John, this is Robin. <laughs> and I look up and he looks down at me. He says, hi, hi, hi. <laughs> I'm going, hi, hi, hi. I'm John. Hi. And he goes over and puts his feet up on the brick on the table over there and, and starts smoking some cigarettes and I'd be working away. I I'd go, I'd look over and I'd <laughs> and I just <laughs> <laughs> It was kinda of like that. And anyway, so I did I did a great this great job for them on uh, it took me, I don't know, like I guess it was three or four months uh, easily and um, maybe longer. I did, I did their, their office and a, a sort of a mini recording studio on the, on the uh, first floor looking 
been to the quad and I have, I have lots of great, great stories, but, um, uh, I was very fortunate to, uh, you know, to work with, uh, uh, for not with, but for these, these folks, um, my, they were fortunate well, to work thank, with thank you. They were like, the, my favorite yeah. story quickly. My favorite story is, um, <clears throat> I had finished the job and, uh, and I remember that, that they would, they would, they were very, uh, even though they had a very simple, uh, um, um, relationship lifestyle, very, very, very simple. I mean, they walk in the streets, you know, they, it wasn't, uh, where they would walk with bodyguards back then that, you know, they sort of could do that. Um, but on the other hand, it was a big, huge lifestyle. They had a really huge, as you can imagine, you know, so, uh, I wasn't surprised by much uh, of, of the requests that they had for things for me to do, but I finished the job and I get a call on, on, a, on a early in the morning. It was a weekend morning and it's uh, probably Sunday and John calls up and asks me if I come over uh, to put uh, a jungle gym together for his son, for, for Sean. And I literally would go there every morning when I was working for them and he'd be in the kitchen, the three, uh, the three of us. And, uh, he, John would bake, be baking bread or cooking breakfast. And I'd go over the previous days work, you know, and stuff like that. So, uh, and I like, I like them both. So, um, I said, I said, sure, sure. And I, I had no idea what to expect when I got up there, but I took a, my bag of tools and then I got myself over there. I lived down downtown and, and uh, took a subway uptown and got there and it was uh, just John and me. And he said, come on in, come on into the room. And so th this was a big playroom and his playroom was like 14 foot ceilings and big. I mean, it was like, had platforms, big platforms. And it, the, the room was probably easily 40 feet by something. It was really big. And in the middle of the room were these six, by six cedar timbers they were like <laughs> like cedar six by six inch cedar timbers it was an outdoor jungle gym and they were just laying in the middle of the room and i i went oh okay okay so I, he wanted me to put this thing together just just me so i'm i'm figuring out how to do it you know i'm loving these <laughs> things and i'm getting them and I'm, I'm getting them together and i'm i'm figuring it out and uh he, yoko had taken sean to the park which they, the, which their their apartment was right on the park, on Central Park, and um, so they were away, and I'm working away for about an hour, an hour and a half, and then in comes John Lennon, and he comes into the room with a beautiful dobro, a beautiful uh, steel hollow body guitar. It's called a dobro. And he sits down on one of the platforms, and he starts playing. He starts playing music. He starts playing songs and riffing and making stuff up. And and I was I, my time was probably down to my navel. And I was like, uh, I like that, listening to just listening to him. And and he's playing and playing. And and then he just looks up and he says, "Not bad, eh?" And then walks walks out of the room. And I I had my private John Lennon concert after you know after about, anyway. So yeah, that was just a amazing amazing stuff. It was fun stuff and and crazy stuff. And then. You know, and then three months after I, I uh, finished, um, we, we lost him, you know, so it was pretty, pretty brutal, you know, pretty brutal for everybody. And, uh, yeah, thought I lost, I lost a family member. You know, it's funny, your story, it, 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 not to, not to, not to add, uh, you know, not to add on to the, the, the death factor because mm. it's such a touchy subject for everybody. I just lost my mm, sorry. He's a really good friend of mine, the guy who introduced me. To it. Sorry. Yeah, Javier. It was Javier La Fianza, and he died of a massive heart attack on Monday and <clears throat> happened to be there when the paramedics showed up and was there to, you know, try to see if, if there was a hope or not hope. And, and uh, an amazing man. And it reminds me of how ephemeral life is in general. And when you have cool moments, like we've had, like we, we, what we do for a living is remarkable. And Jill and Robin, yeah. I just want to let you I guys you know, too, I love Chris. you both love you so too. much. Aww, so I love you too, Jill. I love both you know, of you guys. You know, 
so many great moments living life and sharing life and, and, you know, being goofballs on set and making the jokes and having the fun and, and doing the work. Um, and it has really oh, truly been my own kind of to with say both that. of you guys. Nice and, to um, hear that. Great Likewise, back at you both. Yeah. Miss you both. Same, I feel the same. Yeah. Mm. Rob, okay. Robin, I'm going to let you go, brother. And then I'm going to okay. say I have a moment with Jill before. Uh, Thanks for inviting me. Thank you for Thanks coming for on and just me. being with us. Great to see both of you. You look fantastic. We love, love you, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Jill. Love you, Robin. Bye. Okay. All right, Jill. It's just, it's just us again. Uh, are we going to say, are, are we going to do the I do's now? I guess. Or? I mean, we should have had Robin marry us. <laughs> it been weird. I could have put a wig on and been, been Amy. Been Amy and Travis. Well, okay. Perfect. You're the writer. You get, the Hallmark calls you up and says, Hey, Wagner, wrap this show up for us. What do you, how does, how does this series end in a way that would be satisfying for you? You know, I think, I think that a hundred percent in my mind, they had to take the next step because we gave them all that, like they worked for it, you know, in, in our series, like they really worked for, I bought their relationship. Yeah. It wasn't just like, so, you know, in episode one, they're like, oh, I love you. No, it's like, I just feel like there was a tug and a tug of war with, with how Travis felt. Um, I feel like Amy's feelings were real. Um, and I feel like it wouldn't be too much for those two to run off and get married I definitely think they probably did run off and get and get married. I think they probably took took uh, dad along with them, uh, took Graham, but it was it was short and sweet um, and to the point. And then I think they continued to live their lives in Garrison where they both love. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think they continued to to solve mysteries and solve cases, and they just got closer and closer. And Travis got happier and less dark and foreboding yes his eyebrows <laughs> I, got a little less like active he got mellower as he got yeah older. i think <clears throat> i think hopefully amy added that security that he needed and she accepted him for what he was she knew that he would be gone yeah. you know in in bringing up aaron's character like that was one of her things like you know this is she basically saying know what you're getting into and I think Amy's strong enough and she's she's okay with that she accepts that about him and she 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 knows he loves what he does and she's like go do it you know and we'll we'll work it out if something and happens to yes and to yes and it I 100% think I mean I know in tv they love to bring people together and then bring them apart and then bring them together and will they won't they kind of thing and I think that is Technically, what number seven, the end of number seven was, I think if if they greenlit three more movies, we would have jumped 11 months into the future and we would have understood why they broke up and why Amy suddenly would have, we, I'm sure it would have been a real thing. But I think in terms of for the world now and, and knowing what we know, John has said it was a dream. I think because we did pace the characters' affections for each other out so thoughtfully, from episode one all the way to movie seven. I keep calling them episodes, but they're films. From right. film all the way to film seven, that we earned authentic companionship between Amy and Travis, and there was a genuine love, so that when they confessed their love for each other at the end of it seven, felt it, was, real. it was a good, yeah. yeah, it was a real moment for them. And I think, to yes and it, I think that Travis would have continued to be a cop for the sake of the show. There would have been, uh, you know, another round of real life adventures that they would have helped solve cases. Yeah. But I think if any would have ranked up and been maybe captain or whatever, but at a certain point he would have quit. And I think he would have been, become a teacher because that one episode where he came into your classroom and he was teaching, like, I think- And then he, Amy becomes the yeah, <laughs> Amy, and Amy's like, well, if you're going to be in the classroom, I'm going to go deal. cut my hair and become a cop. <laughs> yeah, Amy joins an elite, uh, an elite 
group of soldiers called the Lioness Force, and she gets shipped <laughs> off to uh, <laughs> to Afghanistan. And and uh, unfortunately, <laughs> Travis and Amy. <laughs> God, I can't even breathe. <laughs> That's funny. Now that is funny. That was that was Amy's backstory. I mean, that was Bobby. She had to change her name to Bobby. Yeah, she had to change her name and identity. <laughs> Cut her hair. That'll never prove. <laughs> <laughs> worst, worst story ever. But that's ours. Um, it's ours. All right, you. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna honor the the time. It's five o'clock. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for getting the babysitter to watch those baby girls. How are they? Uh, I don't know. They probably killed the babysitter. <laughs> you know what sucks? <laughs> They're sucks about here's what sucks about being an actor is that you forge these friendships with people. Like I met your girls right after they were born. I remember those yeah, pictures, so cute of me holding the babies, and and then the minute a show ends, I know. The, the accessibility into each other's lives also ends. And so I think for actors, there's this added component of like, well, I had friends and I had a life and we had a whole, I was like, Uncle Chris there for a minute. It's, and now I'm just some it's dude. A family. Oh. It's a, it's really a family. And it, and you can go through a little bit of, I guess it is a little bit of a depression um, because it feels a, a little bit like a loss, like a change, a, a different chapter. Yeah. And I think when it, and when there's so much change, when, when something does change like that, I think, you know, sometimes I register that as like, oh gosh, you know, I've, I've, I've lost that, but we're not lost. Like you and I, we were so like, we can pick up wherever we could not talk for a year and we would still be exactly like this. That's the beauty of our relationship. And I think that's why we work so well together on screen as well, because it's just that. Uh, that true friendship, that true chemistry, yeah. and we'll always have that. And you know yeah. my phone number, and you know where I live. So. Yeah, there's no, there's no getting rid of this. There's no getting rid of right. Reno. Reno's always we'll, around the corner. We'll always have Reno. Uh, um, and then, and then, anything you want to say to the fans before we hop off? I want to sincerely, absolutely thank you. You all blew me away with your support for the show. I've never been a part of a show that had a fan base quite like this, that, that really like you guys, I think you're the reason why Mystery 101 just kept going and going because you were so vocal. And I know you guys were also vocal about wanting an eighth episode and not wanting it to be canceled. Um, but just know that I think I speak for me, Chris, Robin, the whole cast, the crew, everybody at Hallmark, everybody really does appreciate you guys. And um, I hope that you can just focus on what the show was as as a whole. You know, it was a really good show. And and don't worry about that little ending. We've told you how it ends. We we get married. So I believe it. And it can be yeah. as beautiful as you want it to be in your own mind. You create the ending. You know, as as wonderful as it as it can be in your own mind. Um, but we love you and thank you for um, being a part of our life. Like just really thank you so much yeah thank you guys jill always a pleasure girl i love you love you too baby doll until next time until next time okay bye wider all right guys that, that's it there you've been watching the polaha shitakwa um come back every sunday four o'clock if you want to dive deep into the meaning of life what it's all about um guys thank you so much for watching have an amazing week we will do it again next week bye, -bye.